Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Esoteric Atlanta. We have Stephanie back with us. I know she's done one other video, but of course she was sick for a while. And boy, did my subs here feel it. They were asking for you. I think every episode I had to be like, guys, we are human and humans get sick sometimes. So just give her some time. I was really <laughs> sick, guys. I had like a high fever, body aches, a migraine, a bad cough. Oh yeah, the whole works. But I was upgraded. So, yep. And you know what? That's what, that's what sickness is for. It's for our own, it's our, for our own betterment. So <laughs> then we have our friend Judy who doesn't have a channel, but she's one of our friends off of air, off of the air. So yes, guys, we are really friends off of, off of our zooms. Everybody I film with is my friend off of, off of these, uh, recordings. So, and Judy is a warrior. She is a, um, church survivor. She has a really, really awesome story about her life. Um, for, uh, Stephanie interviewed her, her a few days ago and she told her story. And so I'm going to link that interview down in the description box below. So if you have not seen that interview with Stephanie and Judy, you can go back and watch that. So you understand more of where Judy is coming from. I think that Judy's um, role in this great awakening is just now emerging. I think Judy, you're going to be huge, huge. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm helping. I mean, As if I'm you. Like, it's like, so she was also on the dark outpost this morning and she did such a phenomenal job. So like, we're exposing this. this I, I dropped another bomb. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's what we, it's what we do. We were called <laughs> witches from hell. Uh, I, well, y'all know I got a death threat from uh, Larry Gators on YouTube. He said, uh, uh, well, he said, my job is to decapitate witches, that witch down in Atlanta, Bryce. That's a death threat. That's an actual, yeah. like, mm -hmm. I, get e I get emailed death, death threats all the time, whatever. I laugh at those. But that was like a really scary one. That was a literal. Um, I remember that. Um, that was put on, that was right before the other stuff started happening. So it was like one after the other. That was really scary. Um, but LOL, I'm still here because I'm protected by the true God. I am protected by the true God. I am, have Mary Magdalene around me. And Judy, you also speak a light language. I was actually thinking about this. Um, you're mm -hmm. very healing with your light language. You, after I was in the, in the, like the heat in the heart of my attacks, you did a light language over me on a zoom and it was so powerful. It blew the, didn't it blow the, um, transformer. Transformer. <laughs> <laughs> the dark ones got a little upset. They got a little upset. <laughs> That's okay. Well, they remote view into these Zooms, guys, and, and, and it's a real thing. And uh, they were remote viewing, and I could feel it. I could definitely feel it. And also, too, when Judy was on the Dark Outpost this morning, oh, my God, like, how many times did you lose connection? It and seemed it like, like it was four. It was, I think it was actually six times or something like that. And six, it was really hard to get back in. I yeah. was having trouble with the link. That's, that's, that's a testament that, like, you were right over target. You were exposing right. the lies of Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, so if you guys go to my channel and watch it, it's an incredible story. You can view it on Dark Outpost too. But oh my God, it was like, your story is amazing. And what I like about it is it's not like we're hearing a lot of these stories. <clears throat> and sorry, Bryce, I'm not, I don't mean to be taking over here. I don't for know, a second, I'm just, but I just decided I'm going to clean while, while we, before we get okay. Michael and the gang to help us get through this. Gotcha. But it, it's not a story where you were like, we hear a lot of these stories of um, women coming out of the church that were SRA'd. You actually helped people who were SRA'd, but yours is more of a story that is actually more common to the average person so that it, it, it which is going to be super helpful and healing to other people who are trapped in the church, uh, patriarch dogma stuff. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. y'all hit on something that I absolutely agree with. And I've said this cause I've been studying and, and the difference, and I've said this before, but just to reiterate the big difference between Judy, Stephanie and myself is that I left the church when I went off to school at 17 and I just never went back. You know, so I haven't been, I'm 39 now. So it's been what, 22 years since I've been a regular attendee of a church. Lucky you. Yeah. And in, in the intermediate, in, in between that time, I was in India, I was studying. It's so funny. I was saying this, uh, you know, you, when someone uses the word new age, now I am the only female authorized teacher in the state of Georgia in real yoga. So most of the yoga in the United States is fake yoga. I will be making a video on that soon. 
I'm the only female to, to carry this authorization to be able to teach this. And I'm telling you guys, no one in my field, none of my peers, no one I know who practices Reiki or Tai Chi or does charts ever refers to this as new age. That is church propaganda. And it's not new. It's been around the since oldest. the oldest, the mm oldest. -hmm. And the reason why they don't want you to find this stuff is because it's liberating. It, it brings the onus on you to have that relationship with source. That's what the yoga sutras say. That's why the church hates the yoga sutras is it says it's you, you have to work through this. You are the conduit to God. They call it Ishvara source, not your preacher, not the Hindu temple. And as I said yesterday, and I think you mentioned this, I've never gotten a death threat from a Hindu mm -hmm. or a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Jewish person. I got a shit ton from Christians. And even that Bible says you will know them by their fruits. So yeah, how is that even godly if you're threatening somebody? It's not, Come on now. It's not attracting people into your fold. Nope. Oh. People. <clears throat> so, so we are going to be talking about with Judy too. I wanted to bring her in because part of, even though I wasn't in the church, I still recognized the Bible. This was the religion I grew up in, blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't until this great awakening when I started reading the missing books of the Bible, and that was a Mary Magdalene thing. I was on the dark outpost with David and I heard that voice that now I know is Magdalene that talks to me and says, read the missing books of the Bible. And I looked at David on a live show and I said, we should read the missing books of the Bible. And that's how this whole, whole thing started. And y'all know I'm a nerd. You know, I like to study things and holy shit. I'm telling you guys, most of these characters from the Bible we've been taught to venerate are Satanist. They're Satanists and it's in the Bible. We just didn't see it, <coughs> especially the old Testament, especially the old Testament, you know, and y'all, y'all brought up on a date. I know this is going to trigger people, but we're going to go there. We write at dawn, you know, <laughs> so, um, um, I have no problem triggering people anymore. If that's, that's on them as an individual, what they do with that trigger. Yeah. So Yahshua, the real entity, Christ entity, was never crucified. What is crucifixion? What is that? Blood sacrifice. It's just a human sacrifice. No one can pay for your sins like that. That's karma. Karma isn't bad or good. It's just things you're working through. There, the only, sin means the original definition of sin meant to miss the mark, to not understand who you are. If you so, let's say you break it, one of the Ten Commandments. Let's say you cheat on your spouse and you have an affair. You agree to that in your soul contract already. That's your dharma. And what if in that new relationship, you have a baby and your ex-spouse then finds a relationship they are happier in. Then therefore, it's not a bad thing. It's a transitory thing. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Like, we have to relook at this. You can't paint people as black and white. They're, humans are gray. And we all have our life experiences. I love how you said that, Judy, with David. You said, we just have these experiences. And there, that's how we are able to understand ourselves and get mm -hmm. to know who we truly are. And even uh, Joshua says in the one of the Gospels, the Missing Gospels, he says, uh, he talks about living, you will live over and over and over again until you figure it out. That's mm -hmm. not scary. It was very liberating, actually, to discover the reincarnation because it's very scary when you only got one shot at it. And if you don't get it right... Well, and what loving God would ever do that? Like right. yep. that when I was, you know, from the mouth of babes, because kids, you, you don't, you don't have to teach children about God. They already mm -hmm. know God. Yep. You send them to Sunday school and school and they get their mind scrambled and they, yep. they get, get disconnected. But I remember when I was a little girl in Sunday school, or maybe it was vacation Bible school. I can't remember where they talked about, like, you have to believe in Jesus to go to heaven. And I even remember being a little kid and thinking, well, what about all the kids who live in countries where Christianity isn't their religion? How, how do they get to go to heaven if they never learn about this? And I remember justifying in, in my head as a little kid, oh, God must let them live again. I was probably four at the time. Interesting. God, God must let them live again. Because I, in my four-year-old brain, I couldn't rectify that a loving God would do that to someone who didn't have a fair shot. Now, meanwhile, I probably intuitively knew that we all live again. 
at, at four years old, I was having conversations with the angels and God all the time. I didn't have anybody like my age around me. So I made conversation with the spirit realm. That's what I talked to. And I saw them. I saw Archangel Gabriel when I was four. Yeah. I think a lot of kids yeah. I think weren't seeing, seeing stuff. And then we're told, oh, that's your imagination. Oh, yeah. When I told them about the big glowing light and what I saw. Oh, no, 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 no. That's demonic. Yeah, we run into that too. So channeling, like like tarot cards, like any type of divination is used by both sides because we're in a polarized density. There's darkness and there's light. Just because you're channeling, I feel pretty confident that I'm channeling. We know if it's demonic. Like yeah, we, if, it, if it's demonic, it comes in unintentionally and we actually can viscerally feel it. And I know Judy divinates too as well. So I know she can vouch for this too, right? Right. And you're like, who the heck am I channeling? Like you can feel the energy. If you get walk wonky answers, something wrong. <laughs> yeah. And and also too, like it's natural energy that comes over you when you're like, I feel sick. Something feels wrong. Something feels off. So then I like, they have to tell you. Yeah. So I'll ask, is this for my highest good? No. Okay. Who am I talking to? A lot of times we'll say Lucifer or something crazy like that. Or we'll say a couple of <clears throat> names, <not> like, uh, <laughs> infiltrators. <laughs> in our community okay yes. <laughs> yep and um so anyways then that's where i put my board down or i put that deck of cards down i put some oh, selenite yeah. over it i let it sit for a few days or a couple of weeks um and uh then i double check and make sure it's cleansed off and but i can feel the energy i actually haven't been dousing lately because i felt something was wrong and um yeah so yeah. I've put that aside for a few weeks now. And um, yeah. Yeah. So as long as you're, and they, they don't want us. I mean, I, I said this on the Dark Outpost on Tuesday. If you guys look into the Hess Act that happened during World War II, this was the agreement that Hitler made with the Pope to start to convince humanity, humans, that astrology, all this stuff was bad because they wanted us to disconnect. Because mm -hmm. if they could disconnect us, they could control us by using their demons as I pulled the judgment card. <laughs> so y'all ready to get into this? I'm ready. So we're going to go into some, a character that's a huge, huge venerated dude from the old Testament. I think most people know him. King Solomon. No. Yay. He is venerated by the Jewish people, by the Christians and drum roll, the Freemasons. <laughs> oh, interesting. And honestly, the Freemasons are the only people being honest about who King Solomon was. So point to the Freemasons. At least you, you guys are being honest about it. You know, you're not trying to lie. I mean, in the Testament of Solomon, he actually admits to being the one to that he worships Moloch. The Testament of Solomon is a missing book from the Bible. And he says that he worship his God is Moloch. So let's ask the cards first, Stephanie. I'm not even going to ask if he's real or not, because even if he is a, was a fake dude, they're creating a story around him to brainwash people. So first, let's ask the cards. Can they give us any indication who, if that's true or not? Did, did uh, so we have it in his testament? King Solomon worship Moloch. King Solomon worship Moloch. I uh, had the renunciation prayers for the Goetia demons. And it was very confusing because I was hearing some of that and it was very confusing in the church. Who is this guy? Is he good or bad? I didn't know. But but Solomon? I had the list of the Goetia demons, the lesser keys of Solomon. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to get into that. Holy shit. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> it's been hidden from you. It's looking like he's a good guy on the outside, but he's worshiping Moloch. And so it kind of put a standstill at what the truth is, right? And they're telling you a lie. So, you know, he worships Moloch. Yeah. Yeah. Makes, now, makes me now question who is David. Well, it goes all the way back to Moses, which we're going to have to do a part two on Moses because I haven't released that episode yet because Moses himself had some spell, spell books. And we know that he stole the Ten Commandments from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. 
And so what we're every, you have to flip everything guys. So mm -hmm. let's, from what we understand about mm -hmm. Egypt, Egypt, regardless of whether it was the Egypt that we believe is the location now or here in the American colony, it was a collective of all different types of people. There were white people there. There were black people there. There were blue people there. It was a group of people and they were practicing the religions based or the, it wasn't even a religion. It was a faith that came from Atlantis and Tartaria. They had all the information. They knew about vibration and energy. There was no different sex. And so when we came into this final timeline, the Egyptians were the ones that were practicing true spirituality. All right. They flipped everything. So they had their Egyptian book of the dead, which I'm not going to go into too much detail now, because that will be on Monday's show. I'm going to talk more about the history of the Egyptian book of the dead, which was, I will say though, it was originally called the book of emerging forth into the light was the original name of that book. The book Meaning of going into fourth density into the light, the light. That was the original title of the Egyptian book of the dead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. The Ten Commandments were the moral obligations, and that was in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Moses did not, in my opinion, I'm not going to ask the cards yet because that's going to be a follow-up episode with Moses, but in my opinion, Moses stole the Ten Commandments. I already looked into that too, so, and I agree with you on that. Yeah, he stole them. He didn't get no, God wasn't speak to, speaking to him in no mountain. That was all spiritual manipulation. There was no mountain that he was talking to God in, and, uh, and guys, I have his spell books. It, Moses also had spell books. All the things he did in Egypt were casting black was black magic against the Egyptians. It's it's flipped. It's flipped. The Egyptians weren't the bad guys. They were at the brute end of, of this nefarious bunch. Um, so let's actually let's let's ask the cards that. Um, the real Yahshua, the real Christ. Now I know from my research that Christ, Yahshua, nor Magdalene were actually Jewish. They were Egyptian. Will the cards verify were they Hebrew or not? Or were they Hebrew? Were they Jewish? Were they Israelites? This is nothing against the Jewish people, guys. All of our faiths have been manipulated. We just want to know the truth. We just want to get to the bottom of this. And for some reason, whenever I talk about Yahshua and Magdalene not being Hebrew, it really triggers people. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Right. It's just it, like him being married to Mary Magdalene. What's the flipping big deal? I, come on now. Sorry. I get really irritated. Like get yourself out of your cognitive dissonance. It's like you've been lied to about everything else. So, you, so what your, your precious Bible wasn't manipulated either. Come on. Let's start thinking with our actual brains. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting a little bitchy. And the real God is so much cooler, guys. Yeah. When you have that relationship with the real yeah. God. It is. Yeah. I mean, I never fear God anyway. I was never someone who feared God. But you also kind of have this reassurance that whatever happens, you're good. You've always been here. You always will be here. And you're a part. You, have, you carry that spark of God in you. It's never going to leave you. He doesn't, God doesn't leave you. He doesn't betray you. He doesn't, Lucifer does. God doesn't. Like your face, Stephanie. <laughs> We're Nancy Drew in this shit. <laughs> They're off it's worlders. A lot of fun They're too. off worlders. Yeah, yeah. They're off, yeah. Which Egyptian yeah. is off worlders. Yeah. I mean, they're probably like us. They're probably starseeds. They're Lyran off worlders. Yeah. So they weren't. Yeah. And, and they, they, they crushed their story um, <clears throat> and distorted it. I'm getting distortion from this particular card. And this is telling me that light is going to shine upon the truth soon. Yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Not even like, not exactly human. They're I get the, the start with the, the, the strength part is Lyran for me. That's, that's, which I already knew that they are Lyran, but that's not Hebrew. I mean, Hebrew, hmm, Hebrew is, oh, oops, sorry. I shouldn't say that word on. I can blurp it. I can blurp it. See, when you can, when you can't even say family names, you know, you're over the target. Yeah. Well, let's ask this. Are um, Solomon, David. So if you guys don't know your Bible or your Torah, 
it's like one family line from Moses all from well, actually from Abraham Can the Canaanites we can talk about Abraham too because I have always been creeped out by Abraham I remember being in vacation Bible school and singing that song father Abraham and being like I don't like this I don't like the fact even as a kid I didn't like the fact that they had all these wives Yasha yes let's say that in some missing books that that's not cool you don't do that Solomon had like 700 wives and 300 concubines y'all wait that's up. trafficking exactly like a concubine is not no woman is like this is what I want to be when I grow up I want to be a concubine wake up no God fearing I hate even use the word God fearing no person of the light is going to want to inflict that upon somebody else no person of the light is going to want to tamper with somebody else's free will we were laughing i was on I, before on aquarius rising africa we were talking about all these i can't stand love spells i think love spells are fucking pathetic excuse my language i'm getting fiery i think they're pathetic and i you know what i'm sure i can speak for stephanie and judy i think the three of us can agree that we've had some very 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 attractive <laughs> We've had some very, 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 very attractive men in our bed. And we never cast a no love spell. <laughs> that was no all love spells here. That was no. all me, baby. That was all me. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> oh no, Judy, we know you, you we know you you got a girl. <laughs> um you need no love spells. <laughs> so okay, so let's ask that. So starting with Abraham all the way down throughout the Old Testament, that's one family line. Spoiler alert for those who didn't know that. It's one family line they're tracking. Is this one of the bloodline families? In this uh nefarious bunch of controllers that are also to uh Moses, down to Abraham, David and Solomon, all the way through the Old Testament, is that a bloodline satanic family? <laughs> yep. Passionately, yes. Yeah. And they we will have justice. They'll be brought brought to justice. Which is what's happening right now. I think they're still I, I think it's it's a family that you can carry I really think it's the family that starts with an R. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's <laughs> Sorry guys. Ravi's very upset right now. Ravi's and Ravi's Hindu, like we always teach, because he's from India. He's our Hindu, so he's upset. What's he upset about. <laughs> he's upset because he can hear people outside talking, and he's the sheriff. <laughs> he wants to join them. If you ever come to my house, he will hug you and hug you. He will literally like lock his arms around you. He he wants to be a part. He he has he has big FOMO, big fear of moving out. So. Um, but, but come on, it's okay. He's my he's my social butter butterfly. So um, he gets very Miami. Happy when he when he hears people talking outside, and we live in a city, so obviously people are talking outside a lot. And so I'll I'll mute myself and I'll cut out a lot of his barking. But uh, yeah. All right. So um, let's go ahead and go back to Abraham. Abraham, what God was he serving? <clears throat> All right. What God was Abraham serving? And this is going to be a question for the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims. And Judy, hop in. If there's someone you want, if you want to pause and ask about something, just pop right, right in. Okay. Because we know from the book of Jubilees, which I've read on this channel, a missing book of the Bible, that we know which God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. It was Lucifer. Like that's in the missing books of the Bibles, guys. Like, can you post this book that you have found that has this information in it? Which one? Which information? Uh, that you're finding about them being Lu um, Luciferian. Yeah. So Jubilees, and then I can text you. It's the um, Testament yeah. of Solomon. I'll put I'll put all the all the oh, stuff on the right. yeah. Testament of yeah. Solomon is where he says, "Yo, guys." I worship Moloch. Like Solomon's not lying to you. That's what I'm saying. Like Solomon's not the one lying to you. <laughs> like, they don't want us to have that book. 
<laughs> he's telling you, he's like, that's my God. So it's the church that's lying to you. And I said this the other day, my Hindu teacher in India never once has tried to force me to convert to his religion. Never once has asked me to worship him. Never once has asked me to give more money than wasn't just tuition. Never once has he done any of that or made me feel ostracized because I wasn't Hindu. But pastors have, they've lied to me. They've made me feel guilty for not being their version of perfect. Yep. We have to start looking at this logically. You will know mm -hmm. them by their fruits. So the cards are kind of secretive. It's, it's uh, the high priestess card. However, it's a God that thrives on confusion and sacrifice. So it's not a source creator. I'm not getting that. Um, <clears throat> and it looks like he walked away from the other God. So maybe originally in the beginning he did. But it's like he got power. And then the rest of the family followed in his footsteps with a six of cups. And the fool card is for what it is. You've been fooled. You've been duped. So he walked. So it's just a totally flip story. Yeah. He walked away from source and went to Lucifer because Lucifer offered him things, which we know that's what Lucifer does. I forgot that he went from one to the other. It right? Is that, is that the original story? Yep. He walked away from the faith of his father, which we were told was like a satanic faith. But no. if this is coming off of the destruction of Tartaria after the Atlantean fall and a thousand years of peace, and now we're in the new time, which we know is a no, this would have been after. We're, we're not really sure at this point. I mean, the no, whole history is completely effed up. Yeah. So he walked away from the good faith to a satanic one because he got stuff from it. Yeah, he was he was getting, I mean, I got the nine of pentacles. He he had money, he had power. He was, wealthy. He was very wealthy. He had women. We know a lot of him and his, and his grandson Jacob had women that were not there. I mean, there's a whole story of Jacob and uh was it Rachel's sister? She didn't want to be a part of that. She was forced to be a part of that. She didn't want to be a sister wife to her sister. Yeah. It was gross. Like what little, I mean, seriously, what little girl is playing as a kid thinking, you know what? I want to be forced to marry the same man my sister does. No, no little girl saying that. Yeah. No little girl saying that. So, you know, that's going against free will. Is there anything you want to ask about Abraham, Judy? Well, I've heard you say the, that he was a trafficker. Now, I did buy the Dead Sea Scrolls, but some of those stories, some of those books mimic the 66 book Bible. So I don't trust anything that tells the same story. Yeah. I know you have to go deeper, farther back to find the authentic information. And I just haven't found it yet. I think he was a trafficker from the stories, just from hearing the stories, just from what we're hearing about his wives. He had a bunch of slaves. He moved them around a lot. What is that? What is the moving? The yeah. yeah. The transportation as Shanti Car are we calling it on Aquarius Rising Africa, the carpooling of humans? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we know with caravan. Uh, the caravan. We know Joseph, uh, his great grandson. Yeah, because Jacob was his grand. His great grandson was sold into human slavery by his brothers. Like, at what point? Did, this is what I want to ask people. Like, at what point does anyone have that idea? Right. Like, I'm never even as mad at my. I mean, my sister and I don't fight, but if we were kids and I got mad at her, not in my head did I ever think I could sell her. Like that's her power. Well, and it was because they were used to seeing it. They knew yeah. it was an option. Yeah. 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 It's like mm -hmm. Solomon. We were taught that King Solomon was this wise king because there was these two women fighting over this baby. And his grand idea was to cut the baby in half to see which mother would react. And that would be the true mother. What healthy minded person would ever even consider that? Even if you weren't planning on do it, what healthy minded person would even say, I'm going to cut that baby in half just to see the reaction. 
That's a sick mind. You know, that brings up the point, how, how do we not see it? Yeah. Because they have put black <clears throat> all over the book, and we are so spellcasted to, for, to make, us, make it even believable. It is so outlandish. And when you get the spells off, the black magic off, and you step back, then it's easier to see it for what it actually is. Yeah, it's a sick, that is a sick thing to do. And the, the amount of louche that came off of that mother in that moment, talk about PTSD. She was probably traumatized from that for the rest of her life. Yeah. And not to mention the other people in the room were probably traumatized too, because I don't have a child, but I would do everything to stop a child from being cut in half. Mm-hmm not even knowing the child like you don't do like that is not guys he was That's not human psychopath. behavior no solomon was a psychopath um we now know that he got so let me go a little bit through uh solomon so we're because we're going to get to his spell books because yes guys he had grimoires which are black magic spell books bet they don't tell you that at vacation bible school <laughs> yeah. <Sure do not. laughs> listen up kids let me tell you the story about king solomon and his they spell did. books <laughs> he had three of them okay he had the key of solomon the lesser key of solomon and the grand grimoire all right so let's talk a little bit backstory of, of things that make you go hmm with solomon okay so he was not the oldest son of his of david his father uh, Solomon was the product of Bathsheba and David, which is a whole juicy telenovela in itself. If you want a good like soap opera that if you for entertainment purposes, not as a religious text, go read the story of Bathsheba and David. It's juicy. All right. So she he was he was this that son. Right. And Bathsheba. Let me tell you a little thing about Bathsheba. She was not. She was she was kind of wicked. Let's just put it that way. The truth about her is that she was no dainty flower in the wind that just kind of got plucked. Like she was having people, some of Solomon's brothers she had so that Solomon could rule. Well, David, so David got sick and he's on his deathbed. He's got all these children with all these wives because that's, that's, balance. <laughs> that's good, right? That's something we want, right? All these yeah. wives. All right. <laughs> And he decides that he's going to appoint Solomon to the throne because out of all of his sons, Solomon is the one who is doing sacrifices. That is why he wants Solomon on the throne because Solomon is the one that is actually keeping up with the sacrifices. Now I'm sure in churches we're probably, Oh, it's animal sacrifices. Well, I don't care. A life is a life. I don't care, but I'm sure it wasn't just, come on, like, wake up. I'm sure it wasn't just animal sacrifices. Like, let's not be too naive here, guys. Like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. I'm sure there was some human in there as well, right? Um, and so he leaves the throne to Solomon. While he's still alive, Solomon takes over. And then some of his brothers try to take him off the throne. But Bathsheba, his mama, he's a mama's boy. His mama comes in and, like, gets ex -nays those those boys. So... It said that because Solomon was so loyal to God that he prayed to God and God said, I'll give you anything. And, you know, old wise Solomon, he just asked for wisdom. And God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you all this wealth. I'm going to give you all this power and I'll give you some wisdom, which I think is a word that meant. That's wealth. clearly the wrong God. Exactly. Exactly. Well, he got his wealth from overtaxing his people and overworking the people. All right, we see this in the story of Jeroboam, who was someone who came back to Rehoboam, uh, Solomon's son, because Jeroboam got exiled to Egypt because he stood up against Solomon, because Solomon was uh, overtaxing the people, <clears throat> the people, and there were no fair labor laws or fair payment. So he was working the people like slaves so that he benefited financially from, it sounds like Mr. B, it sounds like what the what they want to do to us right now. Doesn't sound like a Mr. T. It sounds like a Mr. B. Let's see it for what it is. All right. So let's so we uh, we kind of know we know that he was worshiping not the good God. And he had uh, this ring called the Seal of Solomon. Now, the Seal of Solomon is a, pent, a hexagram. Sorry, a hexagram. Um, I'll put a picture up on the screen while I'm editing so you guys can see it. And it was given to Solomon to have control and mastery over the demons. Well, why the hell would someone want to have control and mastery over a demon? 
right? Um, yeah. I showed the video of Chuck Schumer, that video of him directing. There was something in a seat in the Senate. You can't see it. He's directing. So do with that what you will. I'll probably play that video in this video as well so the audience can see it in case they missed it. Now, the hexagram itself is not bad. The hexagram is a six-pointed star. This eventually becomes the Star of David. And it was taken, it was stolen from the east. In the east, it's called the Shat Kona. And it represents the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So the pyramid going up is the pranic masculine and going down is the divine feminine, the uponic. That's the Shat Kona. So it was the balance of divine feminine and divine masculine. Now we know that this group, the darkness can't create anything. It can only take from the light and invert it. So we already know that, that all their little symbols they use were at one point used for good, good purposes. Well, shot is six in Sanskrit. And we know that Sanskrit's a light language. Hexagram is Latin. And we know Latin is a dark language. To hex someone, to curse someone, hexagram. Okay, from Shot Kona. So people think that the ring was also a portal. This also mimics Freemason rings. So can we ask the cards, uh, Stephanie? Did he have a ring, a special ring? And was it given to him by Lucifer? Who was it given it to for him to control his demons? I'm going to ask specifically if he had a ring given to him by Lucifer. Oh, my God. I had an ace just pop right out as I asked. Is that the ace of wands? Yeah. That's, that's like spell casting. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a ring. Do uh, are are there powerful people today in possession of that actual ring, the same ring? It's like freaking Lord of the Rings, where they have to drop the <laughs> ring in the. Oh my god! And I'm not in the Lord of the Rings fan. I'm not like someone that knows much about Lord of the Rings. Tol Tol Tolkien is a Freemason. That's oh, who no. wrote. It. That's who wrote no. it. Yeah. Okay, so is that ring like, I mean, I'm thinking that ring is still around and they're still using it. Sorry, I'm yawning. Okay. <laughs> it's hard work taking down the satanic church. <laughs> Tell me about it. Getting called a wicked witch from hell this morning. That was <laughs> whatever. Whatever. <laughs> they're going to feel obviously doing, I'm um, obviously over the target. Yeah, they're going to feel real stupid when they realize we were right this whole time. <laughs> we aren't the enemy. We're yeah. trying to free you. <clears throat> well, that's the thing. Like, it's, it's just a programming. Um, well, I think it's in the hands of somebody good now. Because I have the Ten of Pentacles, the Justice card. And I have the Six of Wands, which is victory. So this is a happy card. This could be a good bloodline family. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting it does exist. Um, but again, it's in the hands of a good person or family at this point in time. Maybe they're going to put it in a volcano. I don't know. Like I was about to say, did they destroy it? 
was was the Lord of the Rings literally a documentary? Good question. <laughs> what we got to do with this freaking seal of Solomon? <laughs> <laughs> The Lord of the Rings, a documentary on the spring, the Seal of Solomon. And the hobbits, the little guy, the little people, us little ones, we have to destroy it? I don't know. Maybe. I'm we are a lot shorter than we're supposed to be. And, and even in the middle, like, Lord of the Rings, I'm going to have to go back and watch it now because, like, there's Middle Earth. Yeah. Oh, I've done a whole breakdown on Agartha. Yeah. All right. Lord of the Rings, a documentary on the Seal of Solomon. I have two aces. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. And it's like you gotta they gotta pick it up to bring it somewhere and destroy it. Yeah. Yeah, this is a generational ring. Yeah. So I'm assuming when they cut the head off the beast, they got the ring off the finger. Kiss the ring, you know, kiss the ring. They've been can, we ask, can we ask if it's the Pope's ring? Yeah, ask away. Hologram Pope, yeah, ask away. I mean, is the ring of the Pope the is the Seal of Solomon. The Testament of Solomon, a missing book of the Bible, is where he actually says he worships Moloch. However, if you go read back and reread the Bible, and Sol you're going to see this stuff. Like, he, it's, it's indicating that he is a freaking Luciferian. I mean, the evidence speaks for itself. I, God fearing or God loving people I know would never do the things that Solomon did ever. I don't know if we're supposed to tread on this question. You don't want us to know. Nothing's making any sense in the spread. The cards make no sense at all. Like there's no storyline. There's no nothing. Yeah. Okay. But wait a second. No. No. No, I take that back. Archangel Gabriel, I need you to give me a precise answer on what this means. Because I think I do. This ring, Bryce, this ring, Judy, has something to do with the separation of twin flames. Oh, my God. The, sorry. The lover's card flew out literally like when you were when the lover's card pulled out. And I was like, I think this has something to do with twin flames. Wow. I'm shaking. Now I dropped it. I, I, literally, the lover's card came out. Like, literally, as you were pulling, I was like, holy, yeah. this has something to do with it. It's to card. isolate you from this. They're using it to curse twin flames. Christians, church. Hello. Wait, the, the spirit of the true creator talks to us through these tools. Stop being afraid of it. Thank you. 100%. All right, so guys, I'm sorry. I that just really fucking creeped me out because as she was reading that, I the lover's card literally popped out and it went to my head. And I was like, this has something to do with twin flames. So let me ask this. This is gonna really, really freak the Christians out. <laughs> is sex between twin flames going to cause a vibration when they get to the end, I'm gonna put it that way. I don't know how to be careful about what I say because YouTube will also. When they get to the end of the experience, you know, the explosion, is that vibrate with the twin flames? Since it's two souls coming back, fitting back together, is that part of our ascension? Is people literally having sex, twin flames having sex? I guarantee you they did not do this in vacation Bible school. <laughs> Well, they tell you everything sexual is a sin. <laughs> and we know a lot of the twin flames are of a certain galactic heritage that carry the Christ consciousness with Kundalini is the Christ consciousness and inside all of us. And that's one way to activate Kundalini. There's also ways you can do it yourself through other practices, not sexual, but other practices like what I do, Ashtanga Yoga. That's another way to activate Kundalini. It's not sexual. Well, Price out of all the dang aces I got in the bunch, I get the ace of cups. Whoosh! Baby batter card. But, 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 hello. Hold on. Yeah, they did keep it a secret. Okay. We already know why. Um, victory is behind us. Here's the thing. The, a lot of times twins will come back together temporarily and then before they come back together. Before they go on their journey, 
of Kundalini yeah. rising. Okay. So <clears throat> it's a lot of work on a twin flame then. Yeah. The twin flame journey is not fun. Yeah. No, it's not so for the faint of heart. That's for let's, sure. Let's, let's just re let's regroup this. We know Mary Magdalene and Yashua were twin flames, right? We know that they were twins. They were the same soul and two divine feminine divine. So that's what a twin flame is, guys. It's the same soul that decided, you know, it would be real fun. It'd be real fun if I just split into two people. Okay. So it's kind of psychopathic, even though I know I am. I am. A, I think the three of us were all twins. We all have a twin. But you are complete within yourself. So your half of the soul within your body is complete within itself. You are a complete human being. But you, your other half of your soul is living this other life, right? And so the soul is also experiencing that life too. You mirror each other, right? So you mirror each other in a lot of your life experiences, a lot of stuff that's happened to you. Sometimes you have the same ear. Um, it's weird. It's kind of, I don't know why the ear, but... Same hands, I've noticed. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens that way. So when you have sex with your twin flame, that's where we get the term making love. Because the soul is putting itself back together. So there are things, let me ask the cards this. If sex with twin flames, sorry, mom, if you're watching. <laughs> sorry, Judy's kids, if you're watching. <laughs> um, Elena will be laughing. Um, if sex between the, the twin flames ricochets a vibration out that affects the world, does that mean? That there are things that happen sexually within a sexual relationship of, of a twin flame that won't happen with like a soulmate. Like, are there things that are achieved? Does that make sense? When sex saved the world. Exactly. It's like a soap opera. It is a total soap opera. <laughs> Who knew that sex was going to save the world? Well, if you're going to save the world, why not? <laughs> I mean, that's how we know. Judy, are you glad you joined us today? <laughs> You're so muted. She's so muted. Like <laughs> yeah. That's, Keep going. that's how we know our God is <laughs> awesome. Because this was our God's plan. It our God is like, get together. Yeah. Do a little dance. <laughs> make a little love. You get down to that. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, you gotta have fun, right? <laughs> All right, so what's my question again? Is there something special or different that happens? Is there something that's ignited? We'll just Which say when gate, the gate and the key. <laughs> that way. Well, that goes back to the whole concept with Ghostbusters, the key master and the gatekeeper. But that's for the negative end. But it's also there's a there's a polarized positive end of that too. So if you guys are familiar with Ghostbusters, so women, you have a gate. You're a twin. If you have a twin, the gates of heaven are open. <laughs> What's the song? I forgot the words. Let's see, I, I totally took Christian songs and like. Flung them out the window. <laughs> that, uh, this brings a whole <laughs> new, a whole new understanding to opening the floodgates. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Maybe that's what the song really means. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> you know how many men are so excited right now because sex is what's going to save the world. They're like, I knew it. I knew my <laughs> penis mattered. I knew my penis mattered. And my twin is probably watching this. So, you know, I don't know if mine is or not, <laughs> but who cares? Lover's card. I don't even <laughs> know that I'm his twin. So we don't know each other yet. Lover and temperance card I pulled. So, um, yeah, there's something different that happens. Yeah. It's a work to be done and it's strength. So Lyra. it's vitally important for twin flames to have sex then. Well, twinsies, let's get to work. <laughs> they did not teach us this at Vacation Bible. No, they did not. So if you're a twin, if you know who your twin is, go ahead, light some candles, <laughs> buy some pretty panties. I need, I need to do that myself, so... I'm getting a little too comfortable. <laughs> Maybe start doing <laughs> exercises. 
<laughs> Humanity's depending on you. <laughs> Cutie, it's okay. We love you. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you join the two of us, idiots. <laughs> clearly, clearly. I kind of had a feeling. <laughs> I'm so excited about this, guys. Like, what a final battle. <laughs> Talk about Gog and Magog. Are those safe words? Are those actually safe words? And we have oh, better than getting this. I know, right? <laughs> At the end of it. Way better. So, twins, don't you dare get this, too. We don't need any messy, skunky mm, <laughs> baby batter, Ace of Cups. <laughs> Don't mess it up for all of us. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. <laughs> I hope my niece and my nephews aren't watching, or my, ne my nieces and my nephew aren't watching right now. They're probably really confused. <laughs> all right, all right. So basically, it's a happy ending. <laughs> it's a happy ending. For, for all of humanity, it's a happy ending. <laughs> for everyone. All right. <laughs> this is why... So so the Seal of Solomon has literally been used to keep twins physically apart because we know, we know that twins are already like <laughs> in the quantum. Like we know that. We know twins are already like intermingled and like they're having a, a, it's a love shack up in the quantum. Like they're doing it love all the time. Yeah, exactly. I just got the song in my head. <laughs> they're from Atlanta. They're from, they're from Athens, Georgia. Uh, but anyway, um, but in the physical realm of third density, for them physically to come together in their physical bodies, for that to happen is certain death for the dark ones because they can't take that vibrational. It's a higher vibrational frequency of love, isn't it? Because it's a soul coming back together. Yep. So all, right. all of this, so the seal of Solomon. Am I asking? We, we just, we just, we just figured out that the seal of Solomon was specifically to keep twin flames apart from each other so i'm assuming so now let's talk about the lesser key of solomon which is one of his uh spell books which had all the demons that judy just mentioned the 72 demons um they have in there so this apparently was a, a spell book a grimoire a spell book that's a fancy word for spell book that he wrote for his son he wrote three of them for his son reuben so he can continue the family business of casting spells how to do curses how to locate items how to become invisible how to create love potions so are the covens we know there's multiple covens out there there are covens in the truther movement too there's a lot of them in the truther movement some of your favorite truthers hate to break it to you are witches dark witches oh yeah are they using the spell <clears throat> from the of solomon from the grimoires in order to keep uh twins apart Because if we do the dirty, this is a woman talking. The, the queen of swords is good with her throat chakra. She, she's a speaker, right? She can communicate with words and thoughts. However, according to the question, the answer is yes, they're using it. And to stop those unions from occurring which i already knew but i mean the cards are telling us right here and um hold on i don't think they something to do with the feminine energy so this is probably coming from females. They're, inver they're inverting the feminine energy. Yeah. Like my needle chart was stolen to cast spells. Yeah, they're inverting the female by entrap. I think for most cases, what we've learned, it's the men who get entrapped. And the women. Yeah, their ego. Yeah, because of the man's ego. Mm hmm and so they use like love bombing. They use, um, they use, they know how to take the essence of a natal chart to create the illusion that they are the feminine when the, the, when the actual other half of the twin, the feminine is 
was having a life, like my life was being pulled out of me back in December. I look back at videos from December and I was on death's doorstep. Like I literally looked like I was, cause I was had my life force pulled out of me from <clears throat> these, they were cursing me, pulling my life force in order to create spells to manipulate a masculine. And they're doing that to a lot of people. This, I'm, not, I'm not the only one. I now know of multiple cases where this is happening. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's it's so they don't die. It's so that they it, they're literally this is their life at stake. You know, they're backed up against the walls. Yeah. yeah. If twins have sex, it will literally be the vibration of love will be too high. They won't survive it. They can't catch that frequency and so it's literally their their life i also think it has something to do with a conception too is because you have the they say the solar flash but the solar flash is essentially the womb with the spark of life of a conception yeah that's that, that's a solar plexus yeah the helios yeah 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 so oh they're so dirty they're so dirty. These yeah. Well, dirty. guess what? So um, one last book. We'll, we, we'll skip the key of Solomon because that literally is like, here's how you set up your altar. It's like a manual on how to do black magic. It's not that the, the nitty gritty of like the the meat and potatoes of like the spell casting. So let's talk about the grand grimoire, which is like the Mac Daddy. It's called the Red Dragon because it's how you summon Lucifer. Oh, lovely. Hey. Was Solomon using this to summon Lucifer? <laughs> the Grand Grimoire? I'm assuming so. Uh, he wrote it. <laughs> Just a great guy. I think we should make the churches start talking about this. How many Christians would freak out if they actually understood this, key, this wise King Solomon? Who's we know more about twins here. Oh, Damn. <clears throat> I'm not getting necessarily summoning in Lucifer. Let me pull a couple more cards. Oh, and apparently the original Grand Grimoire, the Mac Daddy, is held at the Vatican. Not surprising. Not surprising. Well, but yeah, but yeah, we're we're witches for conveying this message. But but they have don't even get me started. Most um, Protestants think that Catholics are demonic too. They just can't understand that they're also being controlled by the Catholic Church too. They just don't understand that. Well, we were talking about that on Dark yeah. Outpost today. Yeah. It's like, like it's, it's all under the same umbrella. It is. It's like Baskin Robbins. You're going into the one ice cream store and you got all the different flavors. You're right. under the umbrella of, of the Pope, whether you know it or not. Fact. Yeah. Um, this book is specifically from what I'm getting in the cards. It is more spelled. <laughs> Flying cards, ladies and gentlemen. More spell castings. It's a it's a book that brought down from generation to generation to generation. Um, to be used by covens with the three of pentacles. Here's where it gets weird. It is to snatch, steal, and destroy. And stop and suspend unions. Holy fuck. Like, we're laughing about this. We're kind of joking about this. But this is serious. Sure is. What is the... We need to look into the name of that. What is it called? The Grand, Grand Grimoire? The Grand Grimoire or the Red Dragon. <gasps> what? Book of Revelation, the red dragon is in the book of Revelation. Was going after the woman about to give birth. Oh, you're to the right. Christ. Holy shit. Oh, right. <clears throat> oh, step. What the? <laughs> I'm telling y'all, we're the Nancy Drews of the Bible. <laughs> Friggin' the damn church. Damn, it's going down. I'm sure the powers that I don't care what that starts like that. Yeah, I'm bringing it down. <laughs> so for okay, first, at, did y'all see that orb go by me behind me? No, I was too in my own little world. I, of, yeah, I'm so okay, fuck. ask who that orb was, and then ask what they want us to know about the red dragon. Well, I can't. I can't douse right now. 
Oh, I, oh yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Was that Mary Magdalene? That just went behind me. Will the cards sit give us an ace or anything? Or is that Mary Magdalene? Oh, you have your dowsing board, Judy. Mm -hmm. Can you ask uh, who uh, that was that went behind me? Because I feel like somebody's telling me we have to dig more into this. Getting juicy, folks. Like juicy fruit gum. <laughs> I mean, this is getting naughty. Like, this is all about sex, guys. <laughs> this is literally what this is about. It's about the hokey pokey. It's always about the hokey pokey. <laughs> At least we get to have fun saving the world. Oh, that's why our God is the cool God. <laughs> <laughs> it says yes. That it, it was excellent. So <clears throat> there's something, before we started filming, guys, so I will let you guys know, I have been for the last like couple of weeks, literally every five minutes, I'm seeing the number 11. And I know what, I, I understand baseline what the universe is trying to tell me, but it won't stop. And so I asked Stephanie before we started filming to look into it deeper and she gave me a deeper explanation, but now I think there's even more to it. What, what are they trying to tell us about twin flames? What needs to come out right now on this video about twin flames for whoever is watching? You need to save your space. Why? May I ask? Um, but you also have good in the room too. Is it Bob? Girl, girl you got a battle in your room. Yeah, you have, you have, why me? Why are they always picking on me? <laughs> this could be my space too, I wonder. I mean, I know I've been attacked in the past 72 hours, hardcore. I won't go into it, but Judy, welcome to the show. Is it Bob? Bob? That's our code name. Is it Bob? I get, I, you know, I just remembered. I don't, I just, I haven't used this pendulum in forever and I don't have my dousing board. I don't need it though. Uh, Ju uh, Judy, will you ask? Uh, yeah, it's Bob. Uh, okay. I'm getting a yes with my fingers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, Miss Bob, you conniving. Oh, who acts like she's a female on screen. You <laughs> conniving channeler. We know. every mo mo More people are figuring you out that you are. Oh, they are. I've been getting blood. emails. Oh, honey, we got pictures. I got some world? proof. You gotta get oh, out got to get some Bob. serious, I serious proof. Last time you attacked me, Bob, um, Judy did some light language and it kicked you out of the, the city. So and the next week. <laughs> so you might not want to be here. Just I'm just saying, like <laughs> Bobby, you've been blocked. All right, cool, awesome. So what does Mary Magdalene um want us to know? I'm asking only for Mary Magdalene to come through, not Bob, on uh, what's going on, what they want us to know. There seems like there's a dire message that needs to come through. And I know I'm not getting the whole message because they keep trying to show me 11s and I keep going, okay, explain it the whole way. And then they keep showing me. So what is it they, they want us to know or somebody watching right now to know what does Magdalene want people to know? That these are just setbacks that can't last. They're temporary. We're walking away from the dark to the light. And we have the victory. I'm going to remind you guys again, because words are important and spellcasters know that words are important. Once again, Sanskrit is a light language. Latin is a dark language. The word guru means light or dark to light. That's what guru means. Turning oh. to light. There is a particular person named Bob that we call Bob that always is talking about how you don't need a guru. Yeah. So you don't need to turn darkness to light is what she's saying. She knows what she's saying. She just didn't know that all those, those times she said that I knew what she was saying because she didn't know I spoke Sanskrit. I kept that to myself. So guru means turning dark to light. You well, are. we didn't know the key of Solomon and all this is going to land us up in this particular situation. Why does it keep happening? <laughs> Magdalene wants to say something to Bob. She wants to say, can you pull the, what do you want to say, Magdalene? Either one of you, it might come through you with light language, Judy. She wants to say something to Bob. I think Bob knows who she is. 
Because I know Bob's watching because Bob watches all my stuff. Bobby. I don't watch any of Bob's stuff. I block that. <laughs> Sit your ass down. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Welcome. Judy, you kick ass, girl. Woo! I'm telling you guys, we ride at dawn. They're we ride at dawn. Yeah, they're coming up. <laughs> We're way cuter, too. Our side's way cuter. So <laughs> we have way better outfits. We don't need. We don't need love spells. We don't need love spells. I can get hot men in my bed anytime I want. <laughs> I don't need no love spells. Listen. Oh, know that. This is what it means. Judgment is coming upon those who fake being of the light. Your time is done, Bobby. Bobby. All right. Guess what? And also just going to let remind you, Bobby, and your coven, because there's more of you. There's quite a few of you. We know, we know who you all are. Oh, by the way, you have an infiltrator in your infiltration, too. I know. It's Someone fun. in your coven that is telling us stuff. So have fun with that paranoia. <laughs> um, uh, because there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there was, there's no uh, honesty amongst thieves or something. What's the saying? There's no, there's no honor amongst thieves. That's yeah. it. Honor amongst thieves. Well, this particular person came to somebody I know in my personal life who'd never even seen this person before in a dream. And they know, he said, that is that person. And a message was given to me. You have an infiltrator amongst the infiltration system. For the Ooh. infiltrator of the infiltration, thank you. Because I know you're also yeah. part of what's keeping me alive. So I, I thank you. Jokes aside, I thank you. Um, and I also want to remind Bobby and her coven. <clears throat> I have Magdalene. I know that's why you're going after me. It's because of Magdalene. I'm not going to say how because of Magdalene, but I know that's why you're going after me. I know why you're going after me, but she's here with me. You can't go up against anybody stronger than her. There's not, you can't, you can't hurt me. You can't hurt Judy. You can't hurt Stephanie. And we will have our sex. <laughs> God. Right. I go back. Um, well, yeah, and, and you know, it, it's interesting because lately, so a cop, yeah, I, well, I got my um the target was the, the barrel of the gun was pointed at me the other day and has been for the past couple of days. So now it's I guess it's my turn. Um which um they don't know who I am. I really am not phased by much i mean you guys know this about me i'm kind of like i'm i'm a tough cookie and i've been through hell and back and hell and back and hell and back again so i haven't you judy when you shared your story so it kind of prepared me not to really like care if i lose anything or i mean i care but i mean i can overcome anything and i know i can um <clears throat> I've lost everybody in my life. I've lost my family. I've lost my friends. I've lost my husband. I've lost everything. Um, and even if I were to lose the um, physical things in my life, my, my house, my car, anything like that, you know what? In the end, I, I love and live for the correct God. And when you do that, God has your back and nothing can overtake you. Nothing. You can withstand anything. You can overcome anything. And in the end, losing those types of things actually makes the people of the light stronger. There was one night and I, I know Judy and Stephanie know what happened to me, but I've, I'm not going to talk about what actually happened later on, maybe I'll talk about it, but I had one of the worst attacks I've ever had in my life. Um, and there is somebody here with me that is protecting me right now is my protector. And if he had not been here, I probably would have lost my life that night. Hands down. I would have lost my life that night. And I know that they were trying to soul. What is it called? Soul splitting. Yeah. They're trying to, um, which souls with you, souls me with me. Yeah. 
you can't do that though. Like they can't, they can't. No, you're you're too protected. So that's okay. that's a failure right there. But very bloody. Um, I, it was bad. But when it was when it started happening, I was begging for Michael to end it, and he didn't. It was the person here that actually ended it. And I've gotten that after it happened, that it had to happen because that is now in their record. Yeah. They caught, they're caught caught red-handed by the divine. So, And my sole contract before taking this incarnation was to allow that to happen to me, which is why I have protection. Now I know. Um, because I, I had to allow that to happen because it had to be recorded. It's not the judgment of this world that I would fear. It's the karmic of the next. Your voice is coming in and out, Bryce. Someone doesn't want that out. You just did. Oh, hold on. Bob the Builder. What's the song you came <laughs> up with? Bob the Lizard. Can't he spell cast? Bob the Lizard. No, he can't. <laughs> Sorry, I made a little jingle. <laughs> Your jingle I love my little good. jingle. Flotation revelation. <laughs> <laughs> I have written music in my life. One day that will come out. <laughs> this is why we're going to win this because demons don't know how to laugh. We're no, they the can. Worst. I laugh at everything. I laugh at the good and the bad. I laugh at everything. So we take the that's, worst that's things that's that my weapon ha happen to us, and we make songs about it. <laughs> yeah, we have a ta tap dance routine too. <laughs> I, used, I used to write a lot of songs. I used to do a lot of songwritings. I mean, I I've gotten out of that part of my life because. One person in my life said, which was a very important person in my life, had said um, about one song, oh, no, I don't like that. And I let that get to me. And I look back on it now and I'm like, yeah, she didn't want me to write songs because it would help people heal. Yeah. Yeah. Never let anybody dictate who you are, what you say, what you do. You do you. You do you, boo. Yeah. As long as, yeah. As long as you're not hurting anybody, but, you do you. Well, so I have I, in the state of Florida, I, you can mow the lawn. So I have another Zoom coming up in a couple minutes, guys. Do so. you want to, Judy, is there anything you want to ask before we sign out? We'll have to do this again. No, I can't think of anything. It's good. I'm going to ask the subscribers to put in the comment section if there's any characters of the Bible or any characters of your religion that you're curious about that you want us to look into. Yep. Nancy Drew. We're going to Nancy Drew this shit. So. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I had so much fun. I did not expect to laugh that hard. I thought it was going to be very serious. I somewhere. needed that. I needed that laugh. <laughs> it's been well, a good day of exposure. <clears throat> Do what? Thanks for inviting me. So. Of course. I'm going to have you back, Judy. And once again, guys, go to Stephanie's channel and watch Judy's episodes. So you can hear her story. Um, I guess if I know there might be a way people are going to want to reach out to you, Judy, if they need your help, should they contact you through Stephanie through what, what, how should people reach out to you? If they want to like me, they need I your support. You can put my information, my email or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So I'll put Judy's email. Um, don't send any bad emails guys. Like that's, that's so, that's so pathetic. Yeah, just do, Judy, if you do get any death threats, just delete, well, actually don't delete a death threat, but like, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know what to do. But um, I will say this. I know Judy is going to be a big part of helping people who were programmed in the church later on. Right, Judy? Yeah, I, that is part of my mission to help the church heal and deprogram. So, yeah, I'm here for whatever. Yeah. So, all right, guys. So I know. Thanks for having fun with us. I, I did not. We yeah, never know where these, these cards are going to go with. I love you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you guys you too. Badass. Big bear I, hug. I am happy to ride beside you in this battle in our cute outfits. And <laughs> well, like I said earlier, let the games begin. Yes. Yes. Let Let's do this shit. But this is why we came here, guys. Per the right. one true part of the Bible. Perhaps we were born. We were born for times such as this. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so sit your ass down. All right, guys. We love you. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye. 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 Bye.